Hello there, welcome to World Box once again for the third video here. As you can see, we have a very nice continent that is on the Steam Workshop. I do uh, forget who created this map, but it's just called like the perfect continent or something on the Steam Workshop. You can go and you can find it, and you can give thanks to the guy who created it because I do not remember. But yeah, it's a, it's a very geographically accurate map. Oh yeah, that's the name of it. It's a geographically accurate map. And uh, you got these like little swamps here. You got some mountain ranges here and there. Uh, I don't know why the rivers aren't really leading from the mountains, but whatever. I mean, it is what it is. You got some patches of dense forests and all that good stuff. So, what we are going to be doing is we'll put like, eh, maybe like six different splotches of humans along these little corners of the map here or in areas where they would thrive and uh, we'll see what they do over time we'll see uh, if any revolts happen uh, we'll see what wars do happen and uh, we'll just watch them progress I suppose Ooh, look at this is a bunch of a bunch of black sheep bah. all right here we go we have six different civilizations here they all start off with five individually um, I guess, you know, some might have wandered off into the into the wilderness, and uh, so some are more advantaged than others, like uh, Great Vucid and the Ratty, but, uh, you know, for, for the most part, they're all pretty equal, and they definitely all have an equal shot, even the ones that have three people right now will all have an equal opportunity to uh, rival the others once time progresses here. So, uh, you know, you, you know the drill, you know how they develop. Um, so I'm just going to speed up time here and we'll see uh, what major events break down. Oh, well, look, the two kings are meeting each other. Yeah, look at this. A another little kingdom was set up by one of these little stragglers that decided that they don't want to be a part of the organization of these other kingdoms. They just want to start their own. They're a one-man team right now. And also that uh, little nation that formerly had three people is now up to eight which is like almost the most out of all these others well no never mind well it was for a split second there now they're all up to like nine and ten but that's still pretty good um so that just goes to show that even though they started off maybe not so good they all have a good opportunity to become better all right well these two kingdoms here in the southeast are kind of squishing in the odd the odd people who, uh, you know, kind of ran off with this one dude who then single-handedly started this whole little nation thing. You know, I think uh, if this was a realistic scenario, these two uh, wouldn't be so happy about this runaway group here. So we're gonna we're gonna make them declare war on the odd, and they can split up their lands, and maybe later on that will. Uh, that will cause some wars between the Ratty and the Holy Chai later down the road. Well, the war ended uh, pretty peacefully, actually. Uh, the Ratty annexed the Odd, and, uh, you know, there wasn't really any fighting across this river, even. They just kind of figured it out with diplomacy, and, well, now the Ratty has, like, the most population out of all the other kingdoms here, so uh, I guess they're doing pretty good. Some kingdoms appear to be uh, planting alliances with other nations around here. And all of the kingdoms are starting to get pretty developed now. They're doing good and pretty soon they're going to start going up to the next age of progress. Where they really start to set up farms and permanent civilization and all of that interesting stuff. All right, we all knew it was going to happen eventually. The Holy Chai and the Ratty are at war with each other. Oh, and the, the Great No is getting in on it, too. Yeah, it appears this is the end of the Ratty. Uh, they, they greatly benefited from that war with the Doe, but it seems like the, the Holy Chai, you know, won the day. They turned the tides of the war, and, well, now they're screwed. Now they're at war with basically the entire eastern side of the continent here. And uh, they're they're in trouble. Here comes the rest of the uh, the army of the coalition force to put an end to them. And that's it. They're all gone. Now they're all part of the Great No and the Holy Chai, but specifically the Great No has kind of annexed all of them. 
That means that the Great No is now in the lead in terms of world population and size at 316. Um, in second place we have the Ep, and third being the Holy Chai. Seems like the Fatimi are just minding their own business up here. They're not really trying to do anything. As you can see, deforestation is becoming a real issue now in this world in a box. I think the uh, the amount of vegetation used to be up to like 18,000. Now it's down to hovering about 1350 or 13,500. So yeah, it's it's getting pretty close. There are still some some big forests here that are pretty untouched. Oh boy. The Great No, the Great Vucid, and the Futimi are all at war with the Holy Chai. I guess they were just getting too powerful, and the Great No wanted to remove their main competitor here. So, uh, yeah, they, they and the rest of the Alliance is working together to try and put an end to the Holy Chai. Now, will it work out? That's a different question, but here comes their armies right now. It is a pretty formidable force. I guess we'll just have to see what happens. Here's the first battle. Seems like they're putting up a good fight, but yeah, it's just too, way too many troops coming in here. Well, the battles are getting closer and closer to the Holy Chai's homeland here. They're about to start entering into the town to the far north. And yep, there it is. They've conquered the northwestern village of the nation. And it's only a matter of time until the rest is in a pretty dire circumstance. It appears the Great No and the Great Vucid are going to be uh, winning at least the eastern side of the continent. Now, let's not forget the Ep over here have not been in a single war this entire time. And they also have a pretty considerable amount of land. So they've benefited from that. They've had a lot of time to establish themselves and to sprawl out and develop. Now what I think they're doing the best with is they were next to a very mineral rich mountain range over here with these geysers and they're still mining away at these rocks and, and ores and all that good stuff which is allowing them to have some pretty cool technologies I mean just look at their little town center all their houses are all made out of stone they have these big boats farms they got a lot of good stuff here yeah, this is the end of the Holy Chai. It's it's coming to an end for them, definitely. Yeah. Oh well. It all ends at some point. But this does mean, however, that you know the Great Vucid is now in control here. They're now the most powerful one. From all this annexed land they've acquired from the Holy Chai, they're about to get another little quadrant. Yep. Now they're up to 500 people. That's way more than every other nation on this entire plane so I mean unless the great no gets this which oh well it was looking like they were for a little bit but I guess not anymore unless they get that yeah they're they're gonna have a really real big problem over here with the great Vucid. well a meteor has fallen here further weakening the great the great no <laughs> um, so that's that's pretty unfortunate for them but at least they will be able to gain from all these uh, these special meteor ores that they've uh, acquired from the meteor obviously so I mean when, once they get those farms back it'll be a lot better for them yep the great no and the yellow one which is uh, shit I forgot the name um, are planning to dissolve their alliance they're starting to get a little bit uneasy with one another the great boost I'm sorry because uh, just how vastly superior the Great Vucid is in terms of population now. And I'm sure the Great No isn't very happy that they were able to conquer all of this territory without them getting a singular little chunk besides all the way over here. But I mean, let's face it, they're very vulnerable to any Great Vucid attacks here. Alright, I've renamed them all according to their colors to make it a little bit less complicated here. Because, uh, yeah... Alright, I guess there was a bit of a territorial dispute over this little land here by Pink, because Blue has now conquered it, as Pink declared war on them over it. So, uh, yeah, again, this is just further weakening Pink, 
but also, uh, you know, putting blue further up on the table here. I mean, just look at all these soldiers they have, plus all the ores. They're pretty formidable. And it appears the yellow is planning a war. We do not know with who yet, but we will soon. And uh, I assume it's either going to be pink or blue. So uh, this could be big news. Wow, uh, that's quite the plot twist. It turns out yellow is declaring war on cyan. I guess they want to go for the uh, the weaker enemies and neighbors before they go for the stronger ones that have more experience. But uh, also, it seems that pink is actually whooping up on blue's ass here. They've marched their guys across yellow's border, and they've retaken their village in the east. But also, they took some of blue's lands up here in the northeast. So I, that's not very good news at all for them. It does seem like they're going to be taking it back soon, but still, the fact that they lost it to begin with, and might be losing more land as we speak, is really not a good sign for them. Maybe I was wrong about them having all these ores. Wow, uh, that's that's pretty unexpected there. I mean, the blue have been pushed down all the way to the southwest corner of the continent here, and the pink are now sandwiching the yellow in between, and somehow pulled it off. I don't I don't know, but they they did it. I guess it was all that war experience. I mean, they've been doing wars since the very beginning of the game. I mean, it obviously worked out for them. There goes blue. And along with that, all of their mighty, mighty mountainous ores. And their beautiful coastline here with lots of docks and infrastructure. I mean, just look at how advanced technologically they are down here. Oh, and <laughs> it's pink. Blue is officially down to just 48 people in this little tiny coastal town down there. But, I mean, yeah, look at these houses, look at this, like, monument thing they got going on. Lots of mines and monuments. Cyan, on the other hand, appears to be repelling the yellow attack. The front line hasn't really changed much here. They're just stationing their all of their army right where the yellow seems to be crossing the most, as they're sending in yet another very, very large wave of troops here. I think they're getting on this boat, which might be bad news for them if they attack somewhere else along this river. But they do have a boat here waiting for them in case they do. So I don't know. Well, so much for that. The, uh, the Cyan's defenses in the north could not hold against that sheer, vast, large quantity of yellow soldiers here. So, yeah, now I'm pretty sure Cyan's doomed. So it's about to be just between pink and yellow. Blue's completely gone. Black is completely gone. It's, it's getting pretty intense. Wow. So this is it. This is the once empty continent that seemed so vast and large. Filled almost completely up with human settlements, civilizations. And between these two nations, the yellow and the pink. Now the pink do have a numerical advantage, only by like 40. But the yellow has the advantage of how the pink are kind of separated into two different sections here. The yellow are able to just, you know, maneuver from north to south. Pink have to take boats if they're going to be doing that. Because it's going to be, or just, you know, conquer new lands, but... Otherwise, yeah, they're not going to be able to just happily and freely walk across these lands like they did to invade uh, Blue over here. So, yeah, I mean, we're down to less than 12,000 vegetation now, and... I guess the war is about to start. Who will be the supreme ruler over this magical continent? Or at least it used to be magical, now it's kind of a dump. It's just filled with farmland and homes. Alright, this is it. Let the war begin. Yellow is at war with pink. Right off the bat, yellow took over this forest over here. It was a very small settlement, but you know, it might be a sign of more to come. Who knows? Um, now there's going to be a couple more important battles that are going to take place here that will determine the fate of the war. Yellow's moving in here, attacking more pink villages. Now their population is uh, going against the pink favor here, I guess mostly because of the recent conquest of the formerly pink lands in the west. But in the east, the pink are going up against the yellow here with their army. And uh, they might be taking some lands pretty soon, too. 
So yeah, it's, it's close. It is close indeed. Yep, there they go. That was a very developed society that they just conquered there. So now the pink definitely have the advantage once again by like a hundred. And if they take more lands, I think this might be their capital here. Yeah, I, th I think they started somewhere up here. So if they if they start to take their capitals and near their capital, well then that's going to be really bad news. But it does seem like the yellow have uh, massed up a counterattack and they're taking back their lands. So, but I mean it, it's all over the place. <laughs> well, it's been bouncing back and forth a lot here. The pink are once again going for the capital. Oh, and it looks like they took it, or at least very close to the capital. But again, you know, for every single territory that pink gains. They also lose one. They're about to be losing one over here. Yep, there they go. Man, these borders are a mess, but it, it still seems like yellow has the upper hand. Well, it appears pink is really starting to outnumber the yellows here. They've been taking over some key settlements, most notably in the north, and a little bit over here in the west, and that's uh, really benefited them. So, I mean, unless yellow is able to pull something off pretty soon, and stop losing territory like they are right now it's not looking very good for them yep this appears to be the end yellow's down to 780 population compared to 1300 by the pink over 1300 well over um, yellow keeps on doing these small scale offensives that are pretty unorganized on the pink and they don't really work out that well I mean I guess this one is achieving success but so is the pinks of this one so, uh, yeah, it's not looking good for the yellows anymore. This is like the last big battle. It's the Battle of the Bulge here. And, of course, the pinks have succeeded and are now going to carry on their skirmish to defeat the rest of the yellows. That advantage that the, uh, the yellows had at the beginning, where they kind of connected the parallel fronts here, is not the case anymore and now the pinks appear to be in a way better position I mean to be fair the yellows did conquer the former cyan lands I guess that's their new base of operations over here now but yeah it's just not enough alright it's unquestionable now undebatable uh, the pinks definitely have achieved the upper hand now they don't even have to worry about the southern front, now it's just the north. And it's only a matter of time until the yellows are all annihilated. Their uh, swift rise to power seemed to be only an illusion. As uh, the true victor is the one that started the wars since the very beginning of the game. And have the most war experience as a whole. Alright, and that is it. The war is basically over, I mean, <laughs> it's just down to this one little island over here, and I think the pinks are uh, arriving right now to put an end to them. Or they're just gonna sail around. Well, whatever. It's 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 over them for them regardless, I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah there, there they go. Alright, well, the war is uh, not only evident anymore that the pinks will win, it is now definitive and uh, legitimate. So, yep, the war is now over, and as we always do, we cannot let the pinks survive happily ever after. There has to be a sad ending. This here is a nanovirus goo catastrophe that will lead to the end of not only the rest of society and humanity, but also this entire island as a whole. So, uh, we're just gonna end it off by watching it eat up and devour the rest of the planet at an increasingly fast, exponentially growing rate, and uh, <laughs> watch the one's vast number of 2,000, like 400 people dwindle down to zero. Just speed up the time here and uh, watch the fireworks go.
And there it goes. Nothing remains except for one boat, it appears. No, make that two boats? Nope, just, just one boat. One boat made it out alive. Oh, nope, <laughs> even the boat is gone. Now it's just down to this last person floating around in this ocean to restart humanity here. I guess we'll just swim over to this volcano because this is the only thing that still remains. Oh, and a little turtle. All right, well, on that happy little note, we'll end it there in this world of blue and a dot of yellow. Goodbye.